we're talking about a simple five transistor differential amplifier. And so this is going to be kind of our simplest uh, way of making something like an op amp. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take our diff pair, our NMOS diff pair, V1, V2, common source node V, bias transistor, same as, same as we've been doing. This is IB. And we're going to add to this two PMOS transistors that are actually in the form or hooked up as a simple current mirror. Now, we haven't talked about MOS current mirrors but the simple MOS current mirror is pretty much exactly the same as the simple bipolar current mirror that we did discuss back before we talked about translinear circuits. And so we're going to call this transistor M3, which is the input to the current mirror, and transistor M4, which is the output of the current mirror. So here we have I1, here we have I2, here we have I3, and here we have I4. And this is going to be the output of our circuit, V out. And we're going to define current as coming out of the amplifier. So positive current flows out of the amplifier, I out. And uh, just for the for the time being, instead of letting V out kind of do what it wants to do, we're actually going to apply a voltage source to the output to hold its value. And we're going to dial, so we're going to dial V out. adjusted so that M2 and M4 are both saturated. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to hold the output voltage of the circuit in place and if the circuit has a non-zero output current then uh, Vout is going to have to eat that current in order to keep that voltage there but it's an ideal voltage source so it has no trouble doing that and uh, we're going to make our standard assumptions okay so we're going to assume Uh, that all NMOS transistors are matched. To each other. So M1 and M2 and MB all have the same characteristics. We're going to assume that the PMOS transistors are matched to each other. So that means that M3 and M4 are nominally identical. Um, but we're not going to assume necessarily that the NMOS transistors and the PMOS transistors characteristics are matched. So they may have different threshold voltages, they may have different IS parameters, they may have different values of kappa. Um, we're not. We're going to assume that they're not vastly sort of different from each other. but. We're not going to assume that the NMOS transistor and the PMOS transistor's characteristics are identical. Um, 
they may be they may be comparable to each other, but they're not identical. That would be a very uh, frail assumption, um, or like a fragile assumption to make that NMOS and PMOS transistors are matched. You want to assume that like devices are matched on the same uh, the same substrate, um, and we're going to assume that they're all operating at the same temperature. We're going to assume that the early effect is EAN is infinity and VAP is infinity, so that the early effect is negligible. So these are our idealized transistors. And um, so what we want to do is try to get a handle on kind of what's going on in the circuit. So the first question is, um, what is the output current? And how does it relate to the input voltages V1 and V2? Okay, so uh, what is I out? And how does it relate the inputs V1 and V2. Well, let's start here at the output. What do we know about the output current? Well, we can apply Kirchhoff's current law. So if we apply KCL at the output node, some of the currents flowing in, which in this case is I4, is equal to the sum of the currents flowing out, which is I2 plus I out. And we can easily rearrange this and solve for I out so that we can write I out as uh, I4 minus I2. Well, what is I4? Well, I4 is the output current of this current mirror, right? And so uh, I3 is the input current, and we know how current mirrors work. Uh, so current mirrors, if you recall, um, we had two devices that were matched, an input device and an output device. In the case of the NPN current mirror, we had the emitters tied to ground and we had the bases tied together. Well, here we have PMOS transistors instead. We've got the sources, which are the analogs of the emitter, tied to the power supply. That's appropriate for the PMOS transistors, VDD. And we have the gates tied together. And so they have the same gate voltage, they have the same source voltage. And so um, they will have the same saturation current. So if both of these devices are saturated and the early effect is negligible by virtue of the matching of the transistors and the same temperature, I3 should equal I4. That is, if they're both saturated. Well, here we have a diode connection, gate to drain connection, which is the analog of con collecting or connecting the collector to the base of a BJT. And we said with the BJT that this was a way of allowing the input transistor to turn its own knob to adjust its own saturation or active current level, its own current level, collector current level for the NPN transistor. In the case of the MOSFET, its own saturation current level to match whatever input current we happen to be either forcing in, in this case pulling out, of the transistor. And so that negative feedback connection um, allows these transistors common saturation current level to adjust its themselves to match the input current. So here the input current is just current I1 coming from from the left hand side of our diff pair. So we have I3 I4 is equal to I3 and I3 is going to adjust itself to match I1. And so 
this is actually equal to we have i out equal to i1 minus i2. And so the output current of this amplifier is just going to be the differential output current of the diff pair. Only in this case it's not a differential current, it's actually what we would call a bidirectional current. This current can either flow out of the amplifier into our output voltage source. That is, if I4 exceeds I2, this circuit will push current out. If I4 is less than I2, or I2 exceeds I4, then what's going to happen is that the, the circuit will draw current in. So putting the current mirror on top of the diff pair here basically allows us to take I1, which is a current sink, and turn it around and make it into a current source whose value is equal to our original current and they basically face off against each other here at the output and they get subtracted by Kirchhoff's current law. And so we have made a circuit here whose output current just is the differential output current of the diff pair. And we know a lot about how that differential output current relates to V1 and V2. Namely, um, if VB is in weak inversion, uh, we have a hyperbolic tangent nonlinear relationship that basically will switch from minus IB to plus IB in the span of about 100 millivolts or so, about VDM equals zero. This is not going to be a very sensitive function of the common mode input. Ideally, it would not be a function of the common mode input. Um, and then as you go into strong inversion, you have something that's qualitatively similar. It's just that it takes a wider range of differential input voltage swing to do the switching from one side to the other. Okay, so um, let's think about one more thing. Um, let's suppose I take my V1 and V2 and I make them a common mode input voltage, say VCM, pure common mode input voltage, so that um, the differential mode input voltage is zero. Well, in that case, we know that I1 and I2 are going to be equal to each other and half the bias current. I3 will be half the bias current, and therefore I4, mirrored around here, will be half the bias current. And so I out should be zero. All right, so if V1 equals V2 equals some common mode input voltage, I out will equal half IB minus half IB equals zero amps. So here's the question for you. What happens to V out if I let go with my output voltage source? What happens to V out if we remove the output source. Well, if KCL is satisfied here statically so that I2 equals I4, V out's just going to hold its value. I 
has no no impetus to move. So that's rather interesting because that says we didn't say anything about what value of v out we started with, right? We just adjusted it so that m2 and m4 are both somewhere in the saturation region. And if we were to let go at any voltage that satisfied that, v out wouldn't move. And so that that's kind of weird. It says that the output voltage is indeterminate in this condition. So we can either throw up our hands and say, oh my gosh, I can't figure out what V out is. Or we can basically say, well, what does this mean? It means there's a whole continuum or a whole range of output voltages that are compatible with this condition of V1 equals V2 equals some common mode input voltage. So that basically means if we were to imagine what is the voltage transfer characteristic of this circuit, and we were to ask, well, what is the what is the voltage, the output voltage that's consistent with VDM equals zero? Well, it's a whole range of V out. And so the voltage transfer characteristic would be vertical. It'd be a vertical line at that point. So I'm going to try one more thing here. Suppose we start out in this condition where we uh, are, say, at some common mode input and we apply a little differential mode input to this side. So we, we change V1 from VCM to VCM plus some delta VDM. Well, now I out is not going to be zero. It's going to be some positive value, right? So we've steered a little bit of the current over here you get some plus delta i and some minus delta i. Right, so we've steered some delta i's worth of current over here. And so that delta i gets mirrored here. And so if we look at our output current balance, we're going to have i out being equal to basically IB over 2 plus delta I minus I2 in parentheses I2 minus delta I and so I out is going to be equal to 2 times delta I whatever that delta I is right because we're increasing this side by delta I and we're decreasing this side by an equal and opposite amount so the difference between the two is going to be 2 times delta I So now we have a positive output current, right? Suppose we then let go and ask what happens to V out. Well, that current was being eaten by the output voltage source. If that output voltage source is no longer there, what happens? That current has to go someplace can't go into M2 because M2 is saturated and if it's got no early effect it's not going to increase its current so this current is going to have to go into our favorite thought our favorite uh, sort of thought device here the parasitic output capacitance and will give rise to a plus dvdt. Right, so there'll be a plus dv out dt, which was equal to basically the two delta i over c out. Right, so i equals c dvdt. We move the c out down there. We don't know what c out is. 
We don't know what delta i is, but we do know that delta i is positive, and c out is positive, so dv out dt will be positive. So what's going to happen? Well, v out is going to be increasing, and we can ask ourselves then, well, what is the effect of v out increasing on these currents? All right, well, initially, there's not going to be any change in the currents because these two transistors are saturated. This one's moving further into saturation as V out goes higher because we're getting more VDS. This one is moving uh, down lower in saturation because as its drain voltage gets higher, it has less source to drain voltage. And so this one is moving closer to the ohmic region. And so for a while, there's not going to be any change in the currents. And so this dV out dt is going to persist. It's going to keep increasing, increasing, increasing. Eventually, transistor M4 will be driven into its ohmic region, right? So it'll hit a VDS set below, or VSD set below VDD. And this transistor will start to enter its ohmic region. And so as it gets less voltage across it, then we're going to start decreasing the current flowing through uh, M4. And um, eventually, we're going to decrease that VDS enough that the output voltage stays stabilizes at a place where the current through M4 is just balanced by the current that's flowing through M2. So this transistor winds up in the ohmic region. We're not quite sure how deep. It depends on how far we steer this current over. If it's just steered a little bit, it's just going to come out of the ohmic region or out of saturation into the ohmic region a little bit. If we steered it all the way over, then this transistor will wind up very deep in the ohmic region with uh, very little voltage across it, so practically all the way up at, at power supply rail. Okay, so um, I'll leave uh, the question of what happens if we were to imagine putting a negative voltage on this side or putting a voltage in over here so that the, the output current is negative when we let go uh, over here. But that's all we're going to do for today, and we'll see you next time.